So we recently saw how the numbers who are sleeping rough is going through the roof. And despite all the council's good work, the problem is getting worse. But here's the problem. The government has just given us 1.7 million pounds, that's all, to try and fix the problem. So we've gone out to find the stories behind the statistics to understand what we can do as a city to end this scandal for good. So I met up with Sharon Thompson, Birmingham councillor and homelessness ambassador, to visit Washington Court Hostel. And here we met Will, who runs the centre. One thing that we pride ourselves on at Washington Court is that we will attempt to work with every single person to address the issues that have led to them becoming homeless. So whether yeah. that's mental health concerns or substance misuse, yeah. we have a, a good success rate for people moving on. Sometimes still with those issues going on, yeah. but being able to manage them on their own or with support. Yeah. Yeah. Will introduced us to a brilliant young man staying in Washington Court and we wanted to know how he had first ended up making his home on the pavement. Some stuff happened previous in my life where my family kind of got split apart and then that kind of left us all wandering across the country and we've all just kind of segregated and moved to different towns and I ended up in Birmingham. I'm not quite sure when I felt ill. Because of like I started falling ill, I developed a drug habit because people were taking advantage of me. Like I was sat down on the street and yeah, I may have been, as you call it, begging, but I was just sat there and like other people were walking across to me, like bad people. Yeah taking my money off me and dropping me a bag of drugs right. and then that kept me on a cycle and I, I didn't realise that I was trapping myself down there. I, 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 I thought it had only been about a couple of weeks but um, it actually turned out to be a year. Wow. Look at the main reasons of why people are becoming homeless, like obviously like mental health, hmm. addictions, but there's only a limited number of beds for people that are mentally ill and a lot of people get left waiting and it's just like with addictions as well, it takes so long for someone to be able to get the medication they need for the drug, yeah. whatever they're on. Um, so one of the things that I sort of, um, we talked about when we visited San Basil, was the breakdown of family homes. Young people sort of leaving family homes and sort of running away from their step parents as you sort of highlighted before. And I think this kind of leads to the problem because you know, without their parents, how do they find their jobs? Where do they have their identification and stuff like that? When you're homeless, like, like, you, like it's like a, it's like a confidence feeling, like, mm. like you're not no confidence, like you look all dirty. Mm. You, like, you wouldn't want to go out and find work. A lot of people were there because of problems with funding in particular services. So alcohol and drug services were a, a particular problem. We'll go and work uh, uh, at your centre at the Homeless Heroes as well. So we spoke to Jean from St Basil's about what's needed to end rough sleeping for good. The key is in the word home. So, so what is a home about? What does it take to make sure that people have homes which are there to underpin the rest of their lives? Not something that you worry about whether you have a home or not, but actually something that you, we should all be able to take for granted so we can work, so we can have social lives, so that we can be part of communities. That's, that's the issue for me, that we think about how do we ensure everyone has a home.